up guys? Let's talk some hardware, shall we? Vertex 4, 120 gig. 120 gig? Yeah. Uh, yep. Yeah. Now this um, this SSD, more IOPS than anything on the planet. The max IOPS on this, 120,000 IOPS. Really ridiculous. Advertised 530 megabyte uh, per second sequential reads. Now the writes on this are a little bit slower uh, for the smaller size drives. As you get bigger with the uh, with the uh, Vertex 4, especially the 512 megabyte version, that's really 202 of the 256 uh, gigabyte cards in RAID 0, and that one does get over 500 read and over 500, 500 write. So if you want a lot of speed, you're going to spend a little bit of money on that, but um, you'll get speed and storage that way. <clears throat> now, the Vertex 4, they moved away from Sandforce. They used Sandforce on the Vertex 3. By the way, the Vertex 3 still is a bit faster in the real world, but this one is... Max IOPS Vertex 3. What's that? Yeah, the Max IOPS version of the Vertex 3 with the Max IOPS firmware. That's really all I can find right now. I haven't yeah. seen much of the other ones online. But if you get the Vertex 3 Max IOPS, it is faster than this in the real world. Um, Even though that one's a little bit faster in terms of IOPS per second on paper. Right. The benchmarks on this one are not as good as the Vertex 3 Max IOPS for in raw throughput. But this one in a IOPS per second is way better. And it's also quite a bit cheaper. Yeah. So, you know, factoring price in, this might be a very good solution for a lot of people. It's not quite as fast as Vertex 3 Max IOPS, but there good are, price. There are a few places out there that have got this drive significantly cheaper than what let's call the street price, and that's what we did. And so we, we found a pretty good deal, and we bought it, and it's really good. Absolutely worth having. Um, now, like I was saying, they moved away from Sandforce. Um, they actually purchased Indie Links, and Indie Links makes Everest firmware. They've got their own version now. They've got Everest 2. Uh, they've been working on this for a while. Now, what's happened here is that, they, you know, they were, they were using Sandforce. They were kind of one of the pioneers. They jumped out and they're like, OCZ, we have Sandforce. It is so fast. And everyone's like, oh, my mind is exploding. Oh, my God, the compression technology. Ah, it's so fast. Why is it so fast? And people's skin flew off, you know. That's what happened. But, but now, then everyone else is like, oh, my God, Sandforce. Oh, that's, oh, it's open source. Oh, my God, I got to get some of that Sandforce. And everyone had Sandforce. And then OCZs now, they're like, now we have our own firmware and um, our own controller. Nobody else is going to have it. So they're moving in a different direction, and it's only going to get better from here. It is only going to get better from here as they improve their firmware. So they just purchased IndyLinks. That's it. Uh, one of the things that's cool about this drive, it is going to last a long time. Uh, they guarantee it for five years. So it's easily going to last a long time. Uh, SATA 3, it's trim enabled, all that fancy jazz. Trim, if you don't know what that is. It basically is um, some technology your operating system has to have it. It talks to the drive when you're doing deletes, and it, it tells the, you know how it works, right? People out there, do I have to go into this? It just makes your drive last longer by intelligently deleting things. Well, is, that, is that a succinct way to put it? it uh, it's a performance thing because Flash is weird. You can write to it, and that's fine, but yeah. er actually erasing it right. actually takes time. And so you can mark a file for deletion. Well, yeah, well, it marks those sectors as being... And then Trim sort deleted. of comes back behind it and cleans it out and makes it ready for writing again. Right. Because otherwise, the next time you go to write those blocks, it will take forever to write those blocks. But I also know that Trim has some technology that allows the drive to last longer, just the way it handles the erase cycles. It's a wear leveling so yeah. that you don't wear out one spot on your disk. Mm -hmm. And they also have some other technology. They're, they're, they're really big into like developing technology that helps the drive last longer. They build up some Indy Links Endurance 2.0 technology these kind of things are um the things that are where all the bugs are too i was like oh this is why there's a new ssd firmware every other week is because right. these have never been problems for the last 30 years right <clears throat> well they're going to be expen uh, you know experimenting with the indie links endurance but it is going to make your drive last longer so i would be able to like right now i could buy one of these and not have to worry for the next five or six years it's it's fine and by that time we'll have sata sata 11 and we'll be going at warp 9 I would like to see us move away from SATA altogether and just have PCI Express hard drives. I mean, come on, let's stop screwing around. Yeah, I know. <laughs> the damn interface is slower than the hardware. Yeah. And it never used to be that way. Okay, let's do some benchmarks. Um, if you watched the Kingston video, you've already seen these benchmarks, but if you did not watch the Kingston video and you got here from YouTube, hello, check out techsyndicate.com, solicit, solicit, subscribe. Okay, enough of that. Uh, moving right along here. At O benchmark, let's talk about that. The OCZ Vertex for the 128 gigabyte version. Uh, write speed, 205.697 megabytes per second. Read speed, 498.256. Now, if you get the um, 256 
gigabyte version, the write speed goes up to 380. And if you get the 512 gigabyte version, the write speed goes up to 475. So you're hovering around the 500 uh, limit right there. So it, it is quite a bit better once you get bigger, uh, the drives. But the read speed, you know, you write something, if you're just reading stuff, they're all going to read at the same speed. So that's really, really cool. Um, Except if you've got very small files. Interestingly, with SSDs, right. if you have very small files, the reads are slower than the writes. Right. Yeah, the random is, is just like... Anyway, um, comparing that against the um, Vertex 3, I'm using the uh, Sandforce 2281 firmware. Uh, the write speed on the Vertex 3 is 515, and the read is 535. Vertex 2 or 3 is just ridiculous. All right, now the Kingston, which has been... My favorite drive for a long time, uh, especially this generation, the Kingston HyperX 3K, really awesome drive. That drive, um, 540.474 uh, for the write, and the read is 519.971. There you go. Did some real world tests for you guys. Just did a couple. I haven't had a lot of time. Sorry. We need to, I meant to do like more testing, but. Um, Soon, we'll have staff and we'll take over the world. We just need to get some some sort of pre-release drives and then evaluate them and then send them back and be like, hey, look what we did. Yeah, companies send us stuff. All right, anyway, we, we tested um the OCZ Vertex 4 against the Kingston HyperX 3K. And just to mix things up a little bit, we threw the Western Digital Velociraptor. Uh, this is the 10,000 RPM drive. How big is that? Was it one of the... Um, it was either 150 or 300 gig, but it was the latest version. Yeah, the like latest the, version. The new version. Yeah, they're pretty much all the same speed, the new versions, right? Yeah. Um, so we put them all together, and we tested booting into Windows, and we tested going from nothing to in Skyrim playing your game. So, starting off with the Raptor, um, in Windows, going to Windows from you know the BIOS screen to Windows, 118 seconds. Now the <clears throat> Vertex 4... Going into Windows, 23 seconds. Kingston HyperX 3K, 23 seconds as well. All right, going from, mm, not, well, nothing, but going from Skyrim into the game itself. Going from the Windows desktop. Yeah, the Windows desktop, loading it and spamming the entry key so you're loading up your last game. And we did the same exact test for all three drives. The Western Digital Raptor took 25 seconds to get from the Windows desktop into Skyrim. Uh, the OCZ Vertex 4 took 21 seconds to get from the desktop into Skyrim playing the game. Kingston HyperX 3K, 19 seconds from the desktop to Skyrim. All in all, I really like what the Vertex 4 is doing with their new controller. They're going to have a lot of fun with Everest 4. Everest 4. They're going to have a lot of fun with Everest 2. Do I recommend the drive? Yes, I do recommend the drive. However, if you see a Kingston HyperX 3K at the same price, I'm going to tell you to go, go for that one. Even though it uses the same force controller, it's not a new controller. It's just faster in the real world by a little bit, but it's faster. Uh, Vertex 3, if it was the same price, I may also steer you in the Vertex 3 direction. The main benefit you're getting with the uh, Vertex 4 is the fact that it is a proprietary, uh, you know, controller. It's also a proprietary uh, something else. I don't know. They tell us it'll be more reliable because it's different because there were some serious reliability there issues. There were. They had a lot of issues. And I can... I can say that it probably will be more reliable, the Vertex 4. So if you want something that's more reliable, uh, also the price is really good. I mean, there's not a lot that's competing in that price range. So for the Vertex 4, I can give it a recommendation on those grounds. All right? Join uh, Tech Syndicate. Hang out over there. See you guys next time.